Hi class, in today's lesson we are going to look in more detail at line after the preceding lesson which gave a brief introduction to these different <coughs> um, elements and principles. So as discussed, line is the only one of these that we would describe as an element, that is to say it's a kind of an ingredient, it's a thing that we would put onto the page. Um, and so things like alignment, dominance, unity, depth and contrast might all be ways that we would actually think about what we did with lines. We'll learn more about them later though. So we're going to learn about the principle, or should I say the element line, and by the end of this you should be able to describe where lines have been used within a layout. You should also be able to explain why they were used, so suggest what purpose they serve, and when we go back into class and we're able to work on the computers we will be able to select tools within Zara to create different line types and modify them. So let's start with what they are and why. Now I'm sure everyone knows what we mean by the term line, but as a graphic element um, there are lots of different types of lines and ways that we can use them. One of the most common ways that we would tend to use lines is to enhance comprehension or understanding and we might do that by separating things with lines. So for example if you look at this uh, top example here we've got a line being used to separate these two sections of text um, by using it to organize so uh, we might use uh, lines to kind of apportion parts of a page off by creating boundaries like in these little kind of layout examples at the top here where we have lines around the speech bubbles um, we might use them to emphasize things like this uh, boundary line here also adds a degree of emphasis that draws more attention because it has more visual weight um, and just generally to provide a framework for the page, you'll see quite often um, on pages which can be, or layouts which are quite text heavy, they'll quite often use a lot of lines or boxes made of lines to create a kind of a framework to sort everything into. Now beyond that kind of functional purpose, which is pretty straightforward, um, well actually one little thing I didn't forget to mention, one of the other things that you quite often find line being used to do is direct attention. So you might have a line travelling from one part of a layout to another um, to, to draw your eye through it or to take you from one part of the layout, one piece of information to the next for example. Um, so that contributes again to the framework. Now as I was saying anyway, moving on, uh, looking at line as a part of a, a kind of an element beyond that, it's quite often just used to create patterns. Um, or set a mood or style. So for example, uh, we can get quite a different mood or feeling from very sharp, jaggy lines uh, than we would from very smooth, elegant, flowing lines. Um, they might just be used for these purposes, for the, the, the intention of creating visual interest. Um, and sometimes where it's maybe more prominent than, you know, I guess the terms we use are visual interest or visual impact. Visual interest is more just really where you know, it makes something look a bit more interesting, whereas when we talk about impact, it usually has a stronger effect. It grabs your attention a bit more. Both those terms are quite similarly used. Um, we can also use lines to create a sense of texture, like in this example here, um, and to create a sense of movement, like these lines here. They kind of almost feel like a kind of a track taking you around the page. Uh, and finally, we obviously will use, like in this bottom left-hand layout here, lines to create shapes or symbols quite often. So that might help us to, um, for example, on a piece of packaging, create an illustration or a symbol that relates in some way to the product or um, maybe communicate some information visually without having to write it down. So lines can be used for a lot of different purposes, basically. <clears throat> now, in terms of how we might describe lines, um, one of the things that you need to be really clear about when you're answering questions online in an exam is what you're being asked to do. And so you may be asked to just talk about how line has been used. So you're really, in that case, just describing the lines that are in the layout um, and talking about where they are. You may also be asked to talk a little bit more about what their effect is. You know, so what are they actually doing within that layout? So if we're looking at a page or a layout and we are um, looking at lines on it, we should, when we're talking about them, start to kind of expand our explanation beyond just saying there's a line and actually describe it. So is it straight, curved, dotted, zigzag? Is it like a brush shape like these? You quite often find in illustration programs that um, you can use what are called brushes. And that means that when you create a line rather than it just be, rather than it just being a straight line, 
it will look like maybe a paintbrush or if you look in here you can see some of these have little dots on them uh, or whatever it might happen to be. Uh, is it even going to be lines that are cutting out, for example, in this one down here, part of an image or texture? Um, so is it you know an image or texture that's creating the lines? They can quite often create a sense of perspective like these radial lines here um, that come out from the center. So they give us a sense of depth. They contribute to depth or a kind of an illusion of three dimensionality. It could be the orientation of them. So are the lines vertical, horizontal, diagonal, radial? Um, these all actually have their own suggestions or meanings in kind of the same way that colors and color theory have suggestions and meanings. But we're not going to get too too far stuck into that in third year. Um, it's something we probably look at more in fourth and fifth year. And finally, we, we also want to talk about the weight of a line. So we go from very light lines, lines that have a very light weight like this one here, um, to lines that have a very heavy weight like this one here, or lines that have a variable weight like some of these brush lines or lines that are getting narrower. So when you're talking about lines, it's always good to try and describe them clearly um, because that might help you explain like with these points up here, what purpose or effect that line has or those lines have. So just a quick wee talk through some examples here, just to kind of put that into, you know, into practice. If we were to look at this top example here, we have a couple of examples of lines. Uh, we have lines being used for a decorative purpose up at the top here. Um, we've got some lines diagonally pointing towards the company logo, so they're drawing our attention to something. Uh, we have lines here being used to organize and separate sections of text within the page and this graphic. Uh, so we have several uses of line in there. In this one here, we have lines being used again um, for a, largely for decorative effect because they, they link to this term unspooling. So it's like lots of things being untangled from one another. Um, so they kind of link to the, the, I suppose, the title of the event that it's relating to. But they also do a couple of other things. They direct our attention to this focal point here, which is this main kind of headline piece of text, because these lines all uh, are directing from other parts of the page into that point. They all kind of point into that, that area. And you can see that because they get narrower, so we get that sense of perspective. Uh, it's also used as a framework, although not a very you know, um, traditional framework. It's quite kind of angular and um, you know, it's about all over the place looking, but if you look, you'll find that the text uses these lines as a kind of a frame to hang off of. Um, in this kind of infographic here, you'll see that we've also got use of different types of lines, like um, lines with arrows on them, dotted lines. We've got heavy lines. We've got light lines. Uh, we've got curvy lines. We've got straight and angular lines. Um, but their purpose is largely to direct you, um, you know, to create a path through the graphic. So it almost kind of flows you from one, one infographic to the next. Um, down here again, we have lines being used in a couple of ways. We have lines being used to separate out these different sections of text so that these, uh, these columns are, you know, they have their own space to kind of sit within and they don't get mixed up with each other. And as well as separating the text out, they actually draw our attention down to these images that relate to the pieces of text. So they're creating a, a kind of a path for our eye to follow. And at this top one here, you know, if we we're describing, we would say that we have um, rectangular boxes made of lines or vertical and horizontal lines. Uh, we have a circular line here. We have uh, radial lines or, you know, we could say some of them are diagonal, but the, the idea is that these lines radiate from that central point. So they're what we'd call radial lines. Um, and if we were to talk about their effect, these radial lines are drawing our attention to the focal point, which is this graphic in the middle. Um, the circular line could be, we could be saying that that's there to emphasize it or to create a, a, a way of separating it from these other lines to make that graphic kind of not get so crowded out. It could be that we were talking about these other lines around the outside edges <clears throat> used as a framework. Or, or to separate the different sections of text apart from each other. So really, um, hopefully looking at that, it's fairly obvious or fairly straightforward how lines are being used in these different layouts. Um, now do remember that when you come to do the task, which is going to ask you to do a similar thing to what I've just been doing, but you know, writing it down. Um, on the task here, you're asked to look at several different examples of graphic design. Uh, 
two advertisement posters and one packaging design. And your first thought being asked to describe how line has been used with reference to a number of examples. I'm not going to tell you what they would be um, because I don't want to tell you how to complete it. What's important here is that in this first section, you're only describing, so you're just telling me where the lines are. Um, you know, what they are, you know, how you can see them. You're not getting bogged down in what purpose they serve. You're simply describing where the lines appear and you're describing the lines that are there. The second part here for each example you've identified to explain the purpose or effect of the lines, that's where we're talking about the reason those lines might have been used. So coming back to the slideshow, I mean, uh, you have access to this, that's where we're looking at this part here. So for example, are the lines being used to separate things, to organize or emphasize things, to create boundaries, to provide a framework? Are they being used for patterns or to create visual interest uh, or to give a sense of movement and so on? So that's, that's the difference really between these two different questions. The first one is very straightforward, just kind of, um, you know, describe the lines and tell me where they are within the layout. The second part is more uh, you know, why are they being used? What's the purpose they're serving? So please do make sure you understand that and do refer back to the slideshow if you're not sure. Hopefully that's all been clear enough and you're able to get on with the task, but do let us know if you have any problems, we'd be happy to help.